Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. It is a sweet place. Made sweet by the family before me. Could God really be talking? God speaks every time you have a beautiful thought. Did you know that? How divine are you? And the answer is there is more divinity in your DNA than not. But you don't know that. All of those invisible layers that my partner speaks of that we will enhance your knowledge about as time goes on. Speak of your angelic self, of the mastery inside. And there are so many of you that have to ask the question, if that is so, why are we even here, you would say. What's the deal, you would say. We're more angelic than we are human, yet we have the duality that hides it all, and we come and we go, and there's so much sorrow, and there's so much pain. And the humans stand before me so often, and they say, why me? What can I do? What's it all for? And this is in the area of trust me. ask again are you eternal and you know you are intuitively look inside when you've breathed your last breath on this planet you think that's it I mean can you not feel who stands around you now when physicists tell you about multidimensionality that seems to go on and on and on, what is all that about? What's in there? What does it mean? And the answer is that there is so much divinity surging through your cellular structure. Yahi is in the audience. You heard him. Do you know what he's really discovered? He's discovered how to just tickle the DNA enough to awaken the angelic energy. And it then does the work. You ever wonder about how healing is accomplished? You ever wonder yourself? When you start to move within for your own self-healing, oh, you work so hard at it. Some of you screw up your face and try so hard well I'm gonna heal myself what words do I use what energies do I use what emotions are there what can I do and you have no idea all you have to do is open the door to God and you and let the angel that you are that is responding to 11 layers of DNA heal just the one that needs it the one you can see the human genome it's not that hard and you make it harder than it is. There are those who have come for a healing and they didn't even know it today. And so we're going to say this. Why don't you give permission to say, it's well with my soul. What condition are you in? Do you like it? Some will say, no, I, I came to get out of it. That's why I'm here. I'm going to find some way of getting out of it. I'll give you the way. Just stand before spirit and say, this is well with me. It's another kind of a language you're using. You're telling spirit that all that is within your body is divine. And that regardless of your fear and your pain and your suffering you were saying and that is okay because I know who I am and so do we angel we'll speak more of this in a minute 
There are so many who have said, cry on. It is the holiday season. It is time where we sing about peace on earth, goodwill to men. And we don't have either. <laughs> and we are tired. And we are afraid. And it doesn't look like any of the things that we want are happening. And I want to address that. I want to address that succinctly. And before you leave this room, you'll know how spirit sees what you're doing. Let me first remind you of the lineage of what you have done on the planet. And you've got to go back with me. To 1987. I remind you of this harmonic convergence, this beautiful time, this year, and the time specifically targeted, where at a higher level you would be asked, do you want to go forward with the energy that you have developed for the last thousand years, or do you wish to change it and move into another energy entirely what about a new dispensation defined as an, an energy layer over the planet and all of you said at a higher level we want to move forward and you might say well this is very interesting it cannot be proven and we don't know anything about this but it is the core and the crux of what everything is truly about at the moment. Later on in 1992, you even celebrated it as the 1111. All these 11s, you chose the numbers, put them together, and now you even see it on your clocks, don't you? Why? Every time you see that on your clock, dear human being, I want you to say, thank you, Spirit. It is a reminder of who you are, human being, and why you are here. If there was ever a reminder of your goal on the planet, it is when you look at the clock accidentally, and it's 11.11. And did you ever know, notice that you didn't look at the clock accidentally and see 11.12? Or 11 10 that's because that angel that taps you on the shoulder waits till 11 11 and then says look and how does that feel to you way out of the chance of reality isn't it that you would see that some of you so often 11 11 11 in numerological terms we have said means appropriate spiritual action this is a master number not coincidentally it is two ones next to each other and the one is new beginnings though the energy around 11 11 is a master beginning of appropriate spiritual action on the planet and some of you have missed that entirely you think it's the end times and it's awful it isn't oh. I want to take you again back to the wind of birth you were there I was there I was there angel I saw your face your energy I saw the the commitment if you want to call that energy that you have more than commitment. I saw this passion, desire. I saw you in love with Gaia. And you teetered on the edge of coming into the planet, the canal of birth, to go through what you've gone through now, to arrive at this day, at this hour, when this message is being given. And I was there. And I want to remind you that most of you were born between a time of old energy and 1987. And if that's you, 
That means that you knew full well that when you came into the earth, the energy you would be presented with would be old and stagnant and about to end in 1999 to 2001. All the prophecies said so. All of them. All of your scriptures pointed to the Armageddon, to the various things that would end life as you knew it. And if you read the scriptures, it would start in Israel, and it did right on schedule. And I've said this to you before. Why, why would you come in knowing this? And I'll tell you why. Because you knew that you could change it. And you wonder why you're alive of all of the lifetimes you have ever lived on this planet. This is the one that will make the difference. And some of you will say, well, I am, I have a broken body. I am not up, up to par to do these things. I'll tell you, well, then why don't you change that? Maybe that's why you sit in the chair right now. Light worker. Did you see what my partner presented today with a scientist who discovered that your DNA, human being, actually has a field around it and it changes matter that stays changed? And you wonder what you're doing here. Did any of you notice the other numerological events? Did you put it together that the nine is important? It means completion, you know. You put the nines and the elevens together and they start adding up to things that maybe you didn't realize. The Soviet Union was responsible for part of the prophecy that would bring about the end of the planet. That and the USA and China all together, they had a scenario, a game to play, you might say, all around the trouble in Israel. And it goes with names like Warsaw Pact and NATO and treaties. And none of that happened because in 1988, the Soviet Union fell over. And I say to you, go find that in your scripture. And you won't. Because in 1987, you turned a corner and changed the reality of this planet, metaphysically and physically. All manner of things happened. Did any of you put together the numerology for the symbol of the division between East and West that had to crumble? What you would have called the Berlin Wall. The date that it fell over and was pulled down by both sides was November 9th, 1989. That was 11 9. And if you add 11 9 1989, you'll get 11. It's everywhere. It is the number of the age, and it leads to peace on earth and would you have thought that dear human being when you suffered through the horror of what you now call the 9-11 experience did any of you say it is well with my soul did you dare we're going to talk about this you're on a track that you have put together yourselves but it's going to change the fabric of civilization and all around it. Some months ago, my partner took me to what you call the United Nations. And I spoke and I said these words to them. I said, what you call the 9-11, which is not in prophecy, will change two full generations of life on earth only country that could do anything because they are all powerful and there is no opposition will actually create this and we told you that and you may not like the politics of it and who here wants death and war no one 
And yet sometimes these are the things which Spirit uses to create massive change. There's only one country on earth that has the ability to stick a big stick in the middle of the Middle East and stir it vigorously, and that's you, and you did. Oh, we've answered so many questions about the wars and about the politics, but history will show that this one thing alone changed everything. And if it had not been for this action that you had, which was a reaction to 9-11, there are portions of this planet that would stay in the old energy for another thousand years. And that's not what you chose when you came here. Responsible you are. Now, how do you think you're doing? Seen the news lately? Doesn't look good, does it? Crying, why is there so much more hate today than there was when I was born? Crying, why is it that we seem to be headed for the abyss and blackness? Some of you went through a golden age called the 50s. Nothing like this. It was the end of war, and you'd seen enough, and you celebrated, and there was prosperity. And there was peace, and there was happiness. You say, there was none of this hate. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. It was all there. There was just no light to show it. Suddenly you get a generation of light workers that strike their light, and it exposes the unthinkable, the things that have always been there. And we've told you that before, too. What you changed was the light quotient on the planet. You didn't create any more hate. It was always there. You created a situation that demanded a solution, and the solution is called peace on earth. Did you ever think about that? How are you doing? We're not doing well, crying. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. How can we sing the tunes when we don't have either one? It's getting worse, not better. That's what we hear from humanity. And now I'm going to give you the rest of the story. First of all, something that has been said earlier, you have no idea what's going on. If you will say percolating underneath the news the things that you will never see because it is not going to be reported. Where are the heroes gone, you would say? When will we get them? And I will say to you, soon enough. Can you celebrate the unseen? Can you know that underneath all of the turmoil and all of the hatred that you see, there is something else going on? that might very well bring about situations you can't even think of. Wisdom that goes beyond what anybody has ever figured out. We told you there would be a battle, and there is. Is that news to you? We told you there would be a battle between the old and the new, and here it is, and you're going, woe is me. We told you. It's part of the 11 energy. told you there would be weather changes seen any it can't be a shock it cannot be a surprise we told you there would be severe weather we told you some places that grew your crops wouldn't be able to grow them anymore that's severe and that was 17 years ago why would such a thing accompany spiritual growth and peace on earth, we have been asked. And we will say, this is the way God has always done it. Don't you understand that your consciousness affects Gaia? The earth is in shift because of what you have decided. You cannot have a consciousness shift of this quality on the planet and not affect the elements that are here. You just can't. 
Well, crying, we don't like it. You're not expected to like it. Because you have a heart that's built to be compassionate. Some of you have said, we don't understand Katrina. We don't understand the earthquakes that have just happened recently. And you won't understand the ones coming up either. All part of the reaction of Gaia. Some of you have said, and what purpose can it serve to have that many souls leave overnight? Speaking of last year at this time, Christmas to you, the holiday season, and the earth shifted greater underneath the ocean than in any time in your lifetime. You called it the tsunami. So great was this shift for the planet that the actual rotation of this planet sped up. Did you see that perhaps as a spiritual event or did you look at the horror and the sorrow and I'll tell you human beings have compassion they're built that way what possible good could it do your news has said that up to 200,000 individuals lost their lives at that juncture I will tell you that's incorrect it's 283,000 that's the number let your history show that eventually and you will say why and I'm going to tell you this and my partner told you before what is your reality get above the picture is death the end is it the horror of horrors is it the sorrow beyond sorrows or it is a transition that the planet needs is it well with your soul Oh, you can cry your heart out and you can be as compassionate as you wish I'm not asking that I want to know about your soul angel can you get above it all and say this is part of spiritual shift and then there are those who say well sure you're alive and they're not you can say that could you say and I would have given what they gave could you light worker Every single one of those human beings had that potential when they came into the planet and I looked in their eyes and I said, this is what you might do for the planet. And the angels around us all at the wind of birth looked at them, even the children. We said, this is what you might do. You might come and go quickly and be part of an event that they will talk about forever. And they all said, let's go. And we said this last time, just as a perspective, do you understand what you would call their sacrifice did for this planet? It created a compassion wave that this, this earth has never seen. A compassion wave. What you learn today about human emotion and DNA, I will tell you that this went into the planet and it stayed. You ever think of that? Did you ever think that something so awful as what you call the tsunami could be a giant catalyst to peace on earth? Well, it is. All part of the nines and the elevens that you agree. How does that sit with you? Is it well with your soul? Oh, well, maybe not your heart, but what about your soul? Can you get above it and see this? And if you could talk to them now, I want to tell you, they're fine. We've said this before. You've got smiling faces on the other side of the veil. So many of them, by the way, only a year ago have returned. Did you know that? So many of them. What about the polarization we spoke of? You're shocked that your politics have changed so greatly. You're shocked when you watch television that there is so much polarization between opinions, so much yelling, so much hate. Now we told you exactly that would happen. Why would that be? And what is serving the purpose of this? Why would it, would it occur this way? And we tell you because all humanity will be involved before it's over. 
and they have to make the choice. You cannot have fence sitters. And those who sit back and say, yeah, you do it. I don't care one way or the other. Everyone will care. When they see the profundity of what they're doing, that's what peace on earth is about. How are you doing? I will tell you, human beings, you are closer to this goal than you've ever been. It may get worse before it gets better in your frame of mind, in your perception, in your reality. But if you see that, I challenge you in this holiday season, can you stand up and say, it is well with my soul. That's courage. That's what the soldiers do in battle. Armor themselves. Frightened they are going to meet the enemy. And we told you there'd be a battle between the old energy and the new energy and you are the light workers and you are the warriors of this light and some of you are afraid and some of you are embattled and some of you don't understand. The overview, you're winning and you don't even know it. We've had light workers say, take me out of this because they only see what 4D shows them. Can you get above it? Can you take on the mantle of the masters who are all here and have returned for this event? I'll give you some questions. What do you think 1987 and the 1111 was really about? Did you have any idea that all of the masters on this planet who had walked with their mastery and shown you their mastery in the various cultures and had said they were coming back at a certain time, did you think maybe that the 1111 was hooked to that? And I'll tell you that that is one of the major things that took place and most of you didn't know it. Celebrate the 1111, new beginnings. The masters have returned, all of them, every single one. Part of the energy they are, part of Gaia they are, part of the compassion of the planet they are. Never been a greater time for you to claim the power that you have as a light worker. Did you hook that up? Do you understand? This is a new age of energy. This dispensation you are in is one that will finally decide about civilization itself. Where is it going? What's going to happen? The spiritual rage we told you about, you're seeing it now. It was always there. It's been there for 50 years or more. It was there when many of you were small and little and only saw beautiful things. And it was there. The earth hasn't really changed that much. The only thing that has changed is the light workers came along and exposed the hatred, and that has created those who must decide what they're going to do about it. How are you doing? Why do you think we wash your feet? What kind of a situation is there when we send you into a battle and then we cover you with duality so you don't even know why you're here? That's why we wash your feet. It's only when you start opening that ascension channel, if you want to call it that, and you get above it and you start to be filled with spiritual things that you get another perception of who you are and what you're doing here. And you go, oh, I see. And then on the other side of the veil, when you take your last breath, one of the first things you say to me and the others in the entourage who greet you coming and going. You look at me and you say, how are we doing? <laughs> and I'll tell you what I say to all of those who are asking me even now as they make their transitions. I say, bless you for your light was valuable and it's still on the earth. You're making it happen. How are you doing? 
you're winning and you don't know it. Oh, don't despair. You got to trust me on this one. There are things being developed that you have given permission for. And the big one, have you really put it together yet? The big one, what is the distance in years between 1987 and 2012? It's 25 years. It's the children, dear ones. That's what's percolating. That's what's being developed. A generation of children from 87. Oh, there were new kids before then. There were indigo forerunners because that's what you do. You anticipate the possibilities of what the earth will do. And so many of you came in with that, in, that, that energy in you. Even before what we would call the mainstream of children started arriving in 87 was when permission was given for them all to be indigo eventually. Up to 2012, which some have been called the end of time. It is not. It's the end of an old time. 25 years, a generation in your language. So many have been afraid of it. And it's seemingly around the corner. What's going on? It's these children. Why are they so different? Why did we even bring it up? Why did we channel this to you that there would be those children that are so different on this planet, that have a consciousness that is so different on this planet? Why would we have ever done such a thing? Why would you have allowed it? This is spiritual evolution. What are they here for? I will tell you what they're here for, human being. They're here to facilitate peace on earth you put that together yet why would we give you a new kind of spiritual human being if you were headed into the dumper <laughs> how are you doing it's spectacular that's how you're doing in the trenches of warfare it's hard to tell a soldier as the bombs are bursting around him that things are fine In your case, the bombs that burst around you are your media and your news and this four-dimensional reality that you stick to and call your own, not seeing the other dimensions, not seeing beyond, not seeing the colors, not seeing the grandness, not seeing the hand of the love of God that comes and stirs these things because you're here with your light. We told you eventually there would be a bridge of swords. How many of you can remember these words? The bridge of swords. I want you to remember this. Because we're going to tell you what that is tonight. Sounds like war. Crying. You said there would be a bridge of swords. You said that the energies would pull apart and the chasm would open. And the bridge of swords would be between the energies. Sounds like war, doesn't it? There's that sword word. <laughs> well, it's a metaphor, and I will give you what it means. This is prophecy. We gave it to you so many years ago, and now we explain it yet again for those of you who need to hear it so you'll know how you're really doing. The Bridge of Swords. How many of you have attended a union, which you call a wedding? In a situation where warriors get married and what do they do their friends take the swords of battle out and they put them in the air and they cross them and those union people will walk under the swords like a bridge do you understand what I'm telling you it's not a war and the swords are not being used in battle. They're being used in celebration of a union between the old and the new. And that is called the New Jerusalem. And that is peace on earth. The bridge of swords is here. It's being assembled. And you can't see it. And your news media won't report it because they don't want to. Because it's good news. And eventually... 
will see it too. So where is your heart, light worker? Is it in despair? Do you like what your country is doing or not? It doesn't matter. What matters is this. Can you say, at a higher level, I understand the appropriateness of all things as we march toward the Bridge of Swords. More and more humanity every day is starting to come on what you would call online with an energy which is commensurate with this philosophy that what they want to see is a peaceful civilization and they're going to give their energies toward this this is the bridge of swords How are you doing? I would love to wash your feet right now, even in these closing moments. I want you to go from this place and remember these words. It is well here, on target, warrior. Difficult it is, warrior. And we have told you so many times in sweet moments like this just how much you mean to us. You want to know what's going on on earth? You want to really know what's going on on earth? I'll tell you. This battle that you are fighting and the energies from it are going to be applied to a much larger situation in the future. And when you're not here, you know what that is. It is one of the biggest secrets of the universe to a human being. It's never uttered. The actual name of it is never known. It is not in your psyche, your consciousness, not even in your DNA. It's protected from you. And when you come to the other side of the veil, it has a name, and that's all you talk about. What happens on this planet will change something far larger. It's part of a grander plan. It's something you all set up with us. It's meaningful. It's spiritual. It's beautiful. And up until 1987, we thought the end of the test, of the experience, if you will, would be at hand. And there would be no more Earth by now. And none of the prophecy happened, did it? And the oldest of the old who told you all of the things that could happen, it falls on the floor. Even the players are missing politically that would have created it. And here you are. Here you are creating a new future and you don't necessarily see what we see. How many of you can celebrate, celebrate your cellular structure? How many of you can stand and say, not only am I eternal, but I'm here at the right place at the right time. Some of you say, I'm so insignificant. Nobody even knows me. I haven't written any books. I'm not on any magazines. Nobody knows me. I will say, dear human being, I know you. And the entourage in here knows you and you are as powerful as anyone who is known. Your light is just as bright and just as white as any in the room. Do not apply human cultural conditions to your strength. Master. Angel. That's why we wash your feet. So enamored are we to the human being who would go through this willingly for something that is far larger that has to do with love. Amazing you are. Peace on earth? Not only possible, but entirely probable.
watch for two things. The timing of these, I cannot give you, for this is up to you. Call this a prophecy if you wish. Watch for two things politically on this planet. Soft revolutions. You can define that any way you wish. Soft revolutions in two important countries. One is China, one is Iran. And they are going to trigger more of what we say, a change of consciousness against all odds. An alignment for peace. Watch for it. It's inevitable if you stay on this track. Watch for that. And then there is the big one. The change in the Middle East in Israel. Right in Jerusalem. Watch for this. The unexpected. And eventually you'll see the young person arise who we have spoken of. Can you celebrate with me? That's what's really happening. You can't see it on your news. Can you say it's well with my soul? And finally we say to you this night, every single one of you was designed to stay here. You've got mastery in your veins. to be free choice you got to do it yourself no healer in the room is going to create intent for you to put you on a track that only you can do that's the fairness of the test each human must do it for themselves and so what is your decision Take this information and apply the mantle of it to your spiritual selves this night. Let those in the entourage pour in here now even to a greater extent. Press upon your shoulders. Make themselves known to you. Some of you might, might be able to see the colors now. Some of you might even smell their existence. Let the miracles begin. If that's what it's going to take in your life for you to believe it, then let it happen so that you can get on with what you came for in a healthy body creating the new Jerusalem that's what light workers do that's why you're here and that is the truth and we told you that many years ago and that has not changed and it has not changed and so it is